what we had were 12 orthopedic operating suites being served by a 45,000 CFM traditional chilled water air handling system being fed with, at the time, 42 degree chilled water. Don't pay attention to that. And this unit was trying to maintain 60 degrees Fahrenheit at 40% relative humidity in the space, which is a 36 degree dew point temperature. Now, the reason they wanted such low relative humidities was simply that these are orthopedic operating suites, 12 of them. They have heavy hitting doctors making all kinds of money for this hospital and they wanna be comfortable. And the problem with ortho surgeries are that the surgeons are typically heavily garbed. They are wearing two or three layers of outer garments, perhaps on top of their scrubs. In addition to that, they're wearing space helmets, they're wearing gloves, they're wearing booties. They are hermetically sealed. And the problem is as well that they are working very hard. If you've ever seen orthopedic surgeons work, they many times are wrestling people, sometimes people that are of considerable weight into position to saw them apart, put them back together. And if you look at the arsenal of tools that an orthopedic surgeon has at their disposal and that they use during surgery, they have saws, they have hammers, they have chisels, they have everything but a jackhammer. And you would swear at times it looks like they are building a bridge. And the problem is they become hot. They become taxed, right? They're working hard and they begin to sweat underneath all that gowning. And the problem is that if the environment that encapsulates them, that surrounds them, isn't dry enough to be able to wick the moisture off their skin through multiple layers of clothing, they cannot maintain their comfort. We know that the evaporation of perspiration from our skin accounts for about 25% of our body's ability to maintain its thermal comfort. And if you can't perspire and sweat and have that sweat evaporated because it removes 1,060 BTUs per pound, you will not remain comfortable. So doctors think they are hot and they will yell at the, at the nurse on staff that's in charge of the environmental conditions, make it colder. And the nurse will crank down the thermostat or the facilities manager will jump onto the BAS system and crank the temperature down. And you know what happens when you lower the temperature in a space without changing the temperature of the refrigerant that's dehumidifying the space, the relative humidity shoots up. So it goes from maybe 60 degrees Fahrenheit at 65% relative humidity to 60 degrees Fahrenheit at 75% relative humidity because we cannot remove further moisture. We chill the air more but the relative humidity goes up. And then the situation is even worse. They can evaporate less perspiration off their skin into the air. So in orthos, they typically want it cool and very dry. In fact, 36 degree dew point temperature is a pretty good spot. Now, to get 36 degree dew point temperature air, I would have to provide drier air to the space at a lower dew point temperature to absorb the load, right? I need 32 degree dew point temperature air based on the load to be able to provide 36 degree dew point temperature air in the space and maintain 60 degrees Fahrenheit at 40% relative humidity. What's the problem with 36 degree dew point temperature in the space? And what's the problem with trying to achieve it with 32 degree dew point temperature air? Well, first of all, I said at about 50 dew point in the space is where desiccants come into play. This is well below that at 36 and as well, if I'm trying to provide 32 degree air, dry bulb, wet bulb, dew point to the space to dehumidify it properly, my coil's a block of ice. This will not work. Now there's one other caveat. At the time, this system was operating with 42 degree chilled water. They kept lowering the temperature of the central plant to try to achieve the, the better humidity conditions that the docks want. Never able to do it even at 42. But what's the problem with trying to make 32 degree air with 42 degree chilled water? It's reverse thermodynamics, that won't work either. So this was destined to fail. No one could understand why. No one put two and two together. They could absolutely positively not achieve the conditions they wanted to achieve with traditional refrigerant based systems. Now, docks were uncomfortable. The conditions in the OR were above what would be considered maximum levels for ASHRAE standard 170. That, of course, was a problem, but there were additional problems that were happening. This particular facility was located in an arid area of the country that experiences what's called monsoon season weather. And that's this time of year where very warm 
but wet air off the Pacific Ocean rolls across arid areas of the country, and it creates outdoor air conditions similar to what I'm used to experiencing in South Carolina. And I was just in Texas a couple of weeks ago. What we're used to experiencing there, very, very, very high outdoor uh, grains per pound or dew point temperatures or whatever you want to call it. And what would happen is simply because this system was never designed originally to be able to handle those higher outdoor air relative humidities that were entering the unit and not being processed fully, the relative humidity in the space would continue to climb and climb and climb during those days or weeks on end at monsoon season conditions. And because we were easily able to chill the space and the surfaces to 60 degrees Fahrenheit with 42 degree chilled water, that very humid air would contact those very cold surfaces and condense. Moisture would accumulate and it would do what's called raining in the OR. The ceilings, the fixtures, the devices would drip water into the operating room environment, onto the doctors, onto their face shields, into open incisions in patients, and they would have to literally shut down surgeries and reschedule for a time when the weather conditions were more conducive to being able to maintain a dry environment. Now, when you stop and realize that typical operating suite, well run, one operating suite can garner $20 million in revenue for a hospital, and they had 12 of them, to shut those down for a few hours or a few days or even a few weeks was just, you know, they, they couldn't do it. They couldn't handle it financially. So they had to get this problem resolved. They had all kinds of issues. So what we did was fix it. We came in and decoupled the outdoor air only, a smaller quantity of the total air. So of the total 45,000 CFM that was being circulated, 11,250 CFM of it was code required minimum outdoor air. We decoupled that. We put in a desiccant dehumidification unit and we dried the living heck out of a smaller quantity of air, dried it very, very, very deeply so that when it mixed back in with the cool but too moist air coming back from the operating room at 33,750 CFM, the combination of these two was now at 32 degree dew point temperature which allowed them to be able to maintain the 36 degree dew point temperature in the space that they needed as well, because I didn't need 42 degree chilled water any longer. I was able to raise the chill water temperature to 46 degrees Fahrenheit, easily achieve 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and add about 6% to the 2000 ton centrifugal chill water plant that fed the rest of the hospital. The reason I could do this was do that was simply this, with the desiccant unit, I had removed all of the latent load with regards to the outdoor air, even on a dehumidification design day. I removed all of the latent load associated with what's going on to the space so that the air that entered this unit is completely dry. In fact, it's been dried well below any point that would normally create condensation in this system. So now the cooling coil is operating dry. It's operating sensibly only. I simply have to cool the air down a little bit to achieve the 60 degrees Fahrenheit that I need because I've already dehumidified it to where it needs to be to take care of the dew point temperature. In doing that, I was able to take a 12 row cooling coil and replace it with a two row sensible only coil as well because it's operating dry. There's no moisture condensation. There's no more issues with microbial contamination growing on the coil. No more issues with final filters becoming wet and growing microbial contamination through and having it aerosolize into the ductwork, into the air and get into the space. And as well, the ductwork remains dry. Everything is dry. I could replace the UVC lights, don't need them any longer. If there's no water, there's no, there's no mold growing. And if there's no mold, I don't need UVC lights. And as well, I eliminated all the reheat because in this process, the air is heated up slightly to a point where all I need to do is sensibly cool it back down, to provide the condition of sensible and latent air to the space. I don't have to drastically overcool the air and then reheat it back up and I eliminated reheat. So the boon in efficiency for this hospital was tremendous. This, from a standpoint of getting rid of microbial contamination and its potential to impact hospital acquired infections or surgical site infections in the space was phenomenal. And as well, 
keeping doctors comfortable and keeping the space always in compliance with ASHRAE standard 170, but even during monsoon season weather and never having to shut operating rooms down because of environmental issues with too much humidity and moisture condensation on surfaces was, uh, you know, was a simple payback of basically a month or so with regards to this retrofit. So this was a very, very, very well-received environmental upgrade, a very well-received energy efficiency upgrade, and as well, a very well-received sustainability initiative for this hospital. And with that, I'll stop real quick.